Hello, my good friends, and welcome to episode 76 of One Credit Classics. Before we start today's episode, it's time to thank some of our glorious patrons who have pledged their support to our Patreon page. Thank you very much to the following great people. Justin Timbot Gamus, Strider Caden, The Exile, Alex Cassidy, Chris Lewis, Aaron Chatfield, Prince Watercrest, Talon Scave, James Capper, Andre Russell, Liam Bowes, and Callum Standard. That number grows by the day. If you'd like to join that glorious number and support this channel to get all kinds of cool benefits, then check out the link in the description box below. Any donation will allow you to enter exclusive Patreon competitions, request games for our Patreon picks videos, and watch those videos, and also increasing the number of videos that you get from one to two a week. Also check out our Amazon affiliate scheme, there's a link in the description box. If you shop on Amazon, then use that link when you do, and we'll get a percentage every time you buy something and it won't cost you anything extra. Save that link and get shopping. This week, we dive onto the Mega Drive for arguably one of the single greatest games ever released on that hallowed system. It's 1992's Sonic the Hedgehog by Sega themselves, the sequel to the best-selling Mega Drive game of all time. Now, Sonic 2 was released on the Tuesday, the 24th of November 1992, on a day branded Sonic Tuesday. Beautiful. And it went on to sell 6 million copies and an incredible 400,000 copies within the first week. The plot was really the same as its predecessor, but this time Sonic had a companion, a flying squirrel called Miles Tails Prower, a pun on Miles Prower, who joined him on his quest to defeat the evil Dr. Robotnik and save an army of trapped animals from enslavement. Now, at high school, I had a good friend called Zaz who I've recently reconnected with on Facebook, which is awesome. Uh, and he had a Mega Drive and I had an Amiga and we often swap machines for a week or two. And Sonic 2 was one of the games that he had. I spent ages on this title, really loved it. And it's nearly always one of the first games I play whenever there's a Sega collection available anywhere. We're going for a standard one credit clear. Um, I might do a Chaos Emerald run at some point as an achievement run or as Patreon content. But for today, I'll just be doing a standard one credit clear because it's quite lengthy as well, which is cool. So all we really need to do is sit tight get comfortable and save the world I guess let's do it shall we right let's go save the world shall we I can't tell you how psyched time for this like we should have done this ages ago right ages and ages and ages ago anyhow let's get this done one player oh everything about this is amazing so you can see if you've not played a Sonic game before like uh, there might be some people who, who haven't do you know what I mean um this for me is kind of the apex of it. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Sonic 3, big fan of uh, what they did with the Sonic and Knuckles kind of thing. Uh, I thought that was quite cool. Um, I hired a Mega Drive from a video shop when I was kind of uh, young, um, and the game I had with it was Sonic 1, um, which was just incredible. I had it on the Master System, but just to play, the, the, the differential of kind of speed and stuff uh, was just uh, which really, really was uh, kind of something else. Um, the reason why, there we are, is that I'm messing around with stuff like that, is that what I'm, tra what I'm trying to do is get a, a good number of rings, because 100 rings will give us an extra life, um, and with these early levels, what you're best doing is trying to get a, a kind of good total. You probably saw there, like when I went, if you go through a thing, I think it's with more than 50 rings, um, what you'll get is a, um, a bonus round, when that's where you get all the Chaos Emeralds from. As I said at the start, I might do one or two. I ain't gonna go to try and do a boatload of Chaos Animal stuff. Um, where's it from? There we go. Now that was introduced on this Sonic. Um, that kind of ducking spin dash thing. Um, where are we going? Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, that ducking uh, spin dash thing was introduced on this one. There we go. And there's an extra life through there, you see. And I'm nearly. And that'll be an extra life as well. Solid. So you can see now straight away that makes kind of a big difference. Um, what a lot of people do, who are really good at uh, the bonus rounds, is they'll just, they'll get all six Chaos Emeralds on the first one. And that's continue, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. Because what you do is, once you've done the Chaos Emerald kind of thing, you go back to the level you're on, and then you can start collecting rings again, go through the thing again. Um, so you can, like I say, I have seen it done. Um, where you'll get like all six Chaos Emeralds on the first level. It takes a while, but it's kind of cool to be able to do it. Uh, so yeah. Now the crazy thing we're playing one player is you'll see Tails there. Um, if you've got another pad plugged in, you can just straight up control him. If you play the two player version, the, the kind of uh, the, the split screeny kind of one, uh, the, the, the slowdown on it's pretty, well not slowdown, but like it's really kind of pixelated and stuff, but 
a crazy thing that you could do, and that I know a lot of people, I know I did to be honest when I first played it, when I, I had friends around and stuff, was just to get somebody else to control Tails, because he was basically invincible. Um, so when you had bosses, uh, you could take him out of I mean, come on. That is the most Sonic thing in the entire world, isn't it? Um, hmm. There we are. See, so, I've kind of doubled the number of lives I've got just off the first level there. Oh, look at that! Switch. Right. And Robotnik. Now, what you've noticed from this is the fact that there are um, only two... With the, There's one level later on where there's three, uh, but there's only two zones per kind of uh, type of zone. Do you know what I mean? So there's only two Emerald Hill and two Chemical Plant and all the rest of it. Um, which is cool for me, because I did feel on the first one that that was one of the things I picked it up on. Like, uh, it, it's kind of, it aids the, the quick kind of mechanic of the game and that sensation of speed when you feel like you're constantly kind of moving and stuff. So that is uh, the first kind of world, shall we say. And that's how Sonic works. So we try and get as many rings as possible. If you get hit where you got rings, you lose them all. Um, you can try and collect some tune. I'll say this at the start of every world, probably. Oh, you see what I mean now? But you can pick them up, and that's a central mechanic. Nowhere near as many. Like, that ring animation there that you see is basically the same if you drop, like, a... If, you get, if you've got like a hundred rings, you'll see that same one. So you never get the chance to pick every single one of them up. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Because um, the central focus is the fact that you can just uh, kind of get uh, get some back. So you don't just get one shot pretty much. Right, let's go. Solid. I mean, how could you not love this? Now, if I hadn't got it, there'd be a very good chance that I could get like a few, uh, kind of a few more. Come on, where are we? Solid. And that's the other thing as well that you get from this. Kind of, I wouldn't say the levels are shorter, but there's more that you can get through quicker. Um, and it's—I like say it so many times, but everything just aids that unending sensation of kind of a unending sensation of speed which is the, just the central thing in this game to be honest with you but this is the most sonic thing ever do you know what i mean just massive planes come on yeah. there we go dog's not happy Long-time fans of the show will uh, will recognise that it is uh, his dulcet tones. He's funny, the little dog Bertie, because he just gets so angry at anything. Bless him, because uh, we kind of fostered him, and he was in a spot where there was kind of a lot of other dogs, and he was the youngest one, so he just used to bark at anything. Whereas Larry, the one that, uh, we've had since he was a puppy, is just uh, just loads more chill. But yeah, Bertie, bless him. He does get angry at nothing. But the funny thing is, if you see him around the house, then, uh, like, Larry's the one who's a bit, kind of, got loads more energy, because he's younger, obviously. Um, and Bert, like, 90% of the time, just wants to go to sleep. Unless he sees something else. Right. Hmm. See, I'm not that far off. I'll say I'm a... I'm lucky tail. I'm not that far off it. I don't think there's any that many more rings here. Oh, the classic Sonic water thing. Come on. I mean, that's solid, isn't it? Nice. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it ain't much more, is it? I think this is it, actually. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, what a stitch up. I haven't died or anything, but just I think that's it for rings. 
pretty sure it's just over the top here. Come on. Yeah, it is Robotnik here. Come on. Oh, we've got to try and... There you go. Let's avoid that. There we go. Solid. Pity there wasn't another five rings. Could have got an extra, another extra life. But never mind. Solid. I just see me frantically waggling my arms around. That is annoying how Tails keeps trying to catch you up. 50,000 points, so uh, another extra life, which is nice. Oh, tune. Oh, shit, I think you should look down here. Ugh. Come on. I, like I said at the start of the last level, I will literally say this for the start of every level. I'll just go, oh, tune. Because this, for me, I mean, I talk about streets, like, other Mega Drive games we've done. I hope. It's all right. There we go. I talk about other Mega Drive games we've done. By the way, if that music doesn't stress you out, I don't really know what's up with you. I'm all right, right? Oh! Unlucky little one. I feel like, yeah, my mate's drowned. That's all right. Um, yeah, like I say, when I, we did other Mega Drive games, the soundtracks, although, like, solid. I don't mean of a lesser quality in terms of, like, I don't know, it's, just, it's not as, like, speech. The Mega Drive doesn't do anywhere near as good as the SNES, and, and SNES soundtracks have got their own kind of thing. Um, where where kind of it's just crisper and clearer, but certain types of music just come off, just come across better on the Mega Drive. Um, oh Jesus! See, I've got no rings now. Collecting that bubble, got to be careful here. Shit! All right. See, that would have killed me then. While you've got rings, you can't die. Central mechanic to uh, to Sonic. Dun 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 dun! dun. That <laughs> incredible. Oh shit! Um. Music gets me every time. Um, yeah, so stuff that's like unmistakably Mega Drive. So like uh, Thunder Force and and uh, Streets of Rage Two and stuff like that. Like it's, it's it wouldn't sound as good on a SNES somehow. You'd get that kind of synthy kind of horn kind of sound, which I love in SNES games. And you listen to stuff like UN Squadron or or stuff like that or Pro Protector. It's just perfect. And that's what the SNES does, but this for me is an example of some of the best Mega Drive music around by quite some distance, to be honest with you. Like this, Streets of Rage, the stuff that's unique is beautifully unique. Come on. There we go. Right, um. Now here's the thing, like, you don't... Is there a... Oh, tits. There's a thing about that one. A bit unusual, this, because that's another thing with this, like, it is, it is a bit less linear than a lot of the other kind of platform games, and I think that's what categorised Sonic, really. Um, that with the earlier ones, I think, like, with Sonic 1, there was less of this, but with this, there's so many elements of... It becomes obvious that there's more than one way through any level like these the aquatic levels are such a good example because you can do both of these levels without ever going in the water um which is such a cool kind of a quirk there's like an above see i'm nearly at the end here right oh every time. solid right boss time giant flickies now that's the thing that, that uh, I kind of get quite a bit. That I do seemingly every time. Just don't get it by the hammer. Oh, I think I'm not going to... Oh, yeah. See, like, you don't have to bother with the old... What you're supposed to do is wait for him to hit the arrow. 
and then just jump on top of it. But can you see why how doing the top bit skipped us a lot of the level out? Because the bottom bit of that level is inevitably going to take longer. And that is Aquatic Ruin. A cup of tea, I reckon. Oh, solid. Ah. Oh. How can you not be in a good mood? Like, listening to the uh, Casino Night music. Oh, nice. Now, a central element of this is uh, gambling. Well, why wouldn't it be? You're in a casino. Um, so what you can do is if you fire yourself up with that flipper, you see? You can get... Oh, no. Um, and how it works is, uh, if you get three jackpots, you get like 150 rings or something. Um... Come on. Should we do a bit more? Yeah, why not? Hey, on. I can get that. Sort of. No, I can't. Oh. Oh, baby, bless you. Me anti gambling dog, clearly. But it's so like it. Uh, this is. You spend hours on this. I have done. I've spent it till like it. Uh, I've just done. Because what happens is, if you get. Here we go. There you go. Solid. What I'm trying to do is get up to 100, right? So I get an extra life. Um, but it's one of those things where you'll notice that if you get a bit higher than that, you're like, meh. Like. Oh, no. Right. If you get three Robotniks, you lose 100 rings, right? Hey, up. Oh. Hang on. Or if you get a jackpot and two Robotniks, that's bollocks, isn't it? Oh, God. See, now, now you get stuck in... It's classic gambling syndrome. Because now I'm, like, loads behind. Uh, so I've got no choice but to play it, really. Here you go. Uh, there you go. Let's try and get rid of all these. Now I should be able to get it a bit easier at the top. Right, come on, give me some rings. Oh! Yeah, you can do it. There you go. So you can get out like that now. We've got rid of those things. Top. Come on. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry. I'm not dead, so we're all right. All right, sorry. Think of me that way. Come on. That background, though, it's so Las Vegas, isn't it? I mean, that's obviously what they were shooting for, just a city of kind of neon lights kind of little kind of neon part oh music speed up hold that down there you go I never get why it gives you the speed boots in a bit where you can't really run anywhere oh come on oh, there you go now it slows down again Right, uh, keep going. Ugh. Where are we off? Not that way. Hey, up. The classic Sonic invincibility. You can still get crushed by stuff, which happens on this level, and you can still uh, uh, fall down holes. Not bad, not bad at all. Straight in. Oh. Get that. Um, now, we are going to gamble a bit on this one, because um, there's a really easy place to just fire yourself up in one of those fruit machine things. It's in a sec, I think. Here we are. It's fairly easy to hit this one. Got to try and get 100 at least. It's one of those things now where if I hit like 150 rings, now I'd be like, here we go. Is that 25, is it? No, 30. Solid. See, so now I'm thinking, ah. Come on. 
Two. <laughs> I want one extra life. It's all I want. No Robotniks. Ah. Oh. oh. No, we're all right. Jesus. So whenever you see the first one, your art just goes. Or apparently jackpot two Robotniks. Makes no sense. Right, come on. Come on. There we go, right. Jackpot, Sonic, Robotnik, nothing. All I need is a wanna. Literally all I need. Ah, oh, not 100 spikes. That noise goes through me still. Come on. Not the same again. Sonic bar, Sonic 2. Fucking hell, load of shit. I literally could be here all day at this rate. I think Jack... I want to say three jackpots is 150. And then you push it to that thing of, well, if I get to 200 rings, it's another life. And then inevitably you get to 180 and get, like, a Robotnik. The thing with it is, right, is, like... Say you get, like, 101, you get an extra life. If you lose two and then get two back, you don't... Like, not that you could do that, but you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't count every time you go up and over 100. So it's just the time you've gone over it first time. So, like, come on. Steady progress here. It's just like uh, the first time you hit it. Come on. I only need another 34. Give me another three Sonics. Right, I need another four. No Robotnik's. Come on. I should really just go and get four, really, but... No Robotnik's. Come on. Bart, Robot... Oh. Oh, come on, don't take the piss. It's going to be three Robotniks, isn't it? I, I don't even know why I'm entertaining this, that it's not going to be. Come on. Come on. Oh, for f Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on. There you go. Solid. Let's get gone. So, yeah, extra life. A oh, 100% if I'd have stuck around, I'd have got three Robotniks within the next three spins. Here we go. Dum, dum, dum. That bass kills it. Sped up, it's phenomenal. Come on. Just, music proper blows me away on this. Still. After all these years, I'm still at. Yeah. I still a killer soundtrack. Um, let's go down here. Where are we going? Are we going down the bottom? That's it. Come on. Oh yeah, this bit. I remember being stuck on this bit a lot. Come on. There you go. Oh! I nailed that, if you're being honest. Right, let's go. I'm not far away here at all. I've got a ridiculous number of rings as well. I need another what, 30 up for extra life. Now this boss, one of the first ones that's a little tricky. The best way to do it is to go up the wall and get a hit like that, but you've got to keep moving. If that hits shit. Now look how many rings I've got. 170, there you go. There's, do you know what I mean? And three, beautiful. That's what we need to do. We just need to keep moving. I need to get a ring. Come on. Keep it calm. Fuck. Didn't need that. And now I've got no friggin' rings either. No. Oh, come on. What a load of shit that was. Ugh. Um, get a couple. Yeah, at least I've got some, eh? Friggin' hate this boss. There's such an easier way of doing it than the way I did then. It's just easy to go really, really spastic. That's it. It's to keep moving though, because it's so easy to land on one of those flippers. And then when you do that, you're just in prime position to get it. Get that. Come on. Oh, for frig's sake. Come on. There you go. Jesus Christ. 
It's up there now. I'll take that. Easy come, easy go. I mean, we got one on the fruit machine, so. Oh, solid, solid cup of tea. Right, where's next? Is it the hilltop? Yes, it is. I do love this. Not that, but probably does love that. This reminds me of the uh, the second zone in Sonic One, the marble zone, when you get into the inside bit of it. Some cool mechanic bits as well, like this with the with the seesaws. Come on. Straight down and again. Right, yeah, the seesaw bits are cool. Come on. And again. Right, this is quite a cool bit. Quite like that. You see what I mean? Like you're an underground kind of mazy bit with loads of fire and hazards and stuff. It's very light there. Marble Zone in Sonic 1. Um, it's funny, it's like anything with this. Like, like I've had so many... I can't believe it's taken us this long to do with like a Sonic game. Because Sonic games were, despite being a, a Super Nintendo kid... Uh, as I said before, like I say, my good friend, uh, my good friend Zaz had a Mega Drive, and we swapped uh, Mega Drive for Amiga a couple of times, and, and like uh, I had Sonic on the Master System, and Sonic games in general. If you're a kid of that that generation, you're a '90s kid, it was pretty much impossible to grow up without Sonic. Really, uh, it was kind of at that point where, like, when it was kind of just Mario and Sega were like, well, we've got kind of. Opa Opa, who's sort of a mascot, and then they're like, well, we've kind of got Alex Kidd, who's sort of a mascot. It's like, it never felt like, it didn't feel like a two-horse race, really. Um, let's get one more, come on. There we go. That's made up for losing that. Yeah, it, it's when Sega got Sonic, like, you thought, wow, this is on now. Do you know what I mean? Like, they, they had that sense of that sense of brand identity and I always think about like uh, and it's really stupid oh nice I'm not gonna use it but still um I always think about that bit in it that bit in Alan Partridge where he's on about uh, being annoyed that people say Tannoy when they mean like speaker system he's like Tannoy is a brand name <laughs> but like that, that kind of thing like when a when something becomes so big that it identifies it a brand like I'm not saying that people called the Genesis the the Sonic do you know what I mean that's not what I mean but, like, they had a recognisable face that they could put to a console. Like, if you said, oh, uh, Mega Drive, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I have a Sonic the Hedgehog. Do you know what I mean? But, like, an, or if you said, like, a Nintendo console, SNES or a NES, they'd be like, oh, yeah, Super Mario, yeah. And like, you don't see too much of that now, to be honest with you. Like, um, because obviously we're in that day and age now where uh, there'll be, there's very few kind of version exclusives. Like, um, most it makes financial sense for most of the companies to make the games for as many systems as possible. Um, I was thinking like, um, it was game like, um, uh, I was thinking Soul Calibur. Um, oh, nice, extra life on that. Um, I remember Soul Calibur coming out, uh, three versions, like uh, one of the Soul Calibur games. I think it was like Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, and, uh, and uh, GameCube. And they all had a different hidden character. I think like you had like Link, Spawn, and Hayachi or something like that. And I just remember thinking like, I remember thinking like, that's so weird. You know what I mean? Because that's just a, a separate identity for each one of those kind of uh, versions. But it's the version of the same thing. But ironically, like, like then you would never see a Sega game. Uh, you'd never see Sonic on anything apart from a Sega machine. You'd never see Mario on anything apart from a, a Nintendo machine. And oh. Uh, and uh, like that was what gaming was then. You had to like, and the crazy thing was, you had to pick a side. Do you know what I mean? Like game, like if you're a survivor at that time, if you if you remember these consoles and when this stuff came out, it was one or the other. 
you know what I mean? You literally did pick a side. And there is a bit of that now with PlayStations and Xboxes and all the rest of it, but everybody's playing the same types of games anyway, do you know what I mean? There's much less of that now. Um, like then, like, yeah, pick a side. You'd be like, well, I do like... Where's... Uh, you'd be like, well, I do like Sonic and faster stuff. Or if you liked, do you know what I mean? If you like roleplay games, then the Mega Drive had Shining Force and Fancy Star, and the SNES had like Zelda and uh, and uh, Secret of Mana and Chrono Trigger. If you could import, do you know what I mean? Here we go, boss time. Robotnik and his strangely coloured it. Like I don't even know what that is. It looks like some kind of strange like submarine metal submarine with a gun on the top of it. A little flamethrower type thing. This is what you need to do. Get to here, duck. And then don't stay on the platform next to you because it will do that fire thing. It is possible to get a couple of extra hits. That's the other thing as well with Sonic bosses. Um, it's negating kind of the safe hits, so to speak. It's making sure that you take the safe hits when they're there. Um, because the problem is, like, as you've probably seen with a couple of these things. I mean, I went into that boss with 171 rings. Uh, that previous one, the casino one. Things can go from, like, very good to very bad very quickly on Sonic. But that's Hilltop Zone done. Solid. Swimming around there, letting all those buzzards go. Right, where next? Ah, oh, tune. Base on this. I will talk eventually, just Jesus. The soundtrack is just incredible. Especially this bit. Shit. Come on. Oh, come on. Need yeah, get rings from there. Come on. Right. Wait. There you go. Get that. Right. Time it. Better. Much better. Get, yeah, I can. I can time it right so I don't get spiked on it like that. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I did that on purpose because I really didn't. Being invincible out there, right? I ain't that far away here. Seventy. That's the thing as well. Like so, so often you think, man, not that far away from hundred, and then you'll just get absolutely jipped. Not far at all. Probably should have got a shield if you're being honest. I think this is it, though, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, I'll take that. Onwards. A lot of credits here. But it's not a Saturday video, so we're not continuing. Onward to Mystic Cave Zone 2. Proper like thriller. <laughs> Come on. Ah, um, yeah. You always feel right. Like if, as long as I can get one ring, I'm all right. That noise. Ding. Come on. There we go. Solid. 
dun 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 Come on. Come on. There we go. Oh, nice. Sped up. Oh, come on. Trip. I think you're down here somewhere. Yeah, I'll take that. I think we had it sped up there for a little, for like a split second. That holy grail of getting both power ups here, invincible and your full speed. It's dead easy to die on a load of these spots as well, just because the platforms disappear and there's like nothing there. Super easy. Come on. Alright, come on. Ah! Oh. Can you get up there? No, I need to get up and then. I need to get up from there. There we go. I don't have much longer left at this level now. You get to the point as well, like rings wise, where you just think to yourself, providing I've got a good enough number, it ain't really an issue. Like, you see what I mean? Like, when. If I'm not. If I'm close to 100. I'm going to make more of an effort to get more rings. If I'm, as long as I'm more than like 10, then I'm generally all right. Because over 20 odd, the animation is the same, isn't it? What I've got to do here is avoid the spikes. It's all right anyway, because I'm fairly, I've got a shield as well, so. And now, get back up. I might be up. I mean, nice. Piece of cake. Come on. Good people can probably hear me dog scrabbling around outside the door. Go and mental bless him. Right. Where next? Extra life for that? No, I think it's 150. Oh, the oil zone. Nice. Some cool elements on this. Like, it's weird because even, even the levels that haven't got, like, and nearly all of them have got... Hey, oh. Nearly all of them have got a soundtrack that you're like, oh, God. But even the ones that aren't maybe your favourites, there's still elements of them that are cool. Like this, for example, you've got these kind of, like, uh, things that blow you, kind of... You, these kind of uh, jets that kind of blow you upwards. I'm trying to kind of get back up here. We've got to go all the way. There we go. Um, I mean, the soundtrack is... The, the song on this one's quite good, to be honest. It's just not... It's not one of those ones that sticks in your head. Um, and I'll tell you why it probably isn't. Because it's harder to get this far. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're like a way into the game now. Like, your initial ones, your, your, your Emerald Hill, Green Hill zone's always got to be mint, right? Because that's the one that people are going to hear every time. And the first couple of levels have always got to kind of be super catchy. Um, not like I say, not that this isn't as much, but uh, yeah, it's just not... It's just not uh, yeah, it's just not Casino Zone. Casino Zone's the happiest music in the entire world. I can't tell you how. That just music just makes me feel so... Uh, just feel so joyous upon hearing that. Yeah, but there is so many cool things on this. Like, like I say, the air, the air vent thing. Sliding down this oil and stuff. And there's ways around, like, kind of lots of it as well. But this is another level where there's... Fuck it, where there is kind of uh, quite a few multiple um, ways around. Um, come on, get back on there. There's rings at the top there, so I'm fine. Um, yeah, so we're round here. Oh, shit. Uh, hmm. Sorry. Should we? Uh, Alright, hang on. No. Right. Come on. Right. Uh... Come on. Ooh. Hmm. Right, I need to wait here until this goes up on there. This, this is the, the the level with all the... Uh, the bit with all the flying... Uh, the flying kind of gas oven type things where you go flying and it sends you off in a million and one different direct. That sounds way more sinister than it actually is. Do you know what I mean? That, as, um, although, I mean... Dr. Robotnik has assembled all these uh, peace-loving... Uh, 
peace loving animals on, what's it? In basically like a force them into machinery. This bit. So there's loads of bits like this, which is quite cool. An extra life there, which I can't for the life and remember how to get. Um Come on. Is that where we went? Oh, we'll soon find out. Nah, this is the one that fires across the bottom, right? And then this is the next bit. And then I can run through that. Like I say, there are some cool kind of uh, little kind of gameplay devices on this bit. Right, that's that. Oh. Act one, done. Zone 2. Right, let's do this, shall we? Ugh. Something else you'll notice about this as well is, is that, like, um, there's a lot of, kind of, there is a linear kind of progression with this game in terms of, like, it kind of makes sense, like, why you go to the places that you go. So, like, for example, if you think we started off in the uh, Emerald Hill Zone, then we went to the chemical bit, and then we went on from there, uh, like, the, it, it kind of follows on, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, with a lot of games, like platform games, like, one zone doesn't necessarily follow on from another one. Um, and that's what I like about this, like, there is kind of a, there is a, a, a kind of progression to it. What you notice as well, especially with, with this, uh, these later levels, because this is later on in the game, is the fact that it gets like rarer and rarer and rarer that you've got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of rings to be honest with you it becomes an awful lot rarer um, because because what happens is stuff like that um, you take having do you know what I mean 10 rings or 20 rings like as long as I've got more than like as long as I've got some I don't really mind to be honest with you and there's way more because you're less familiar with these later levels there's way more places for you to just really really cheaply die Stuff you can do though is like, let's see if we can do this here. The f if you get your head around the way the physics, the way the physics works, what you can do with stuff like this is you can kind of negotiate. There we go. You see, you can negotiate your way kind of to the top of stuff. Um, so you can run up those like uh, platforms like that. Oh, I don't need that. Cause what I need to do is go up and round. Oh, I don't. It's gonna go back. Will it go back down if I go on it? No, it bars. God, I'm going to go down there anyway now, right? Let's just have a look. Is it going to respawn? There we are. There we go. Wait, is this... Oh, we'll soon find out. Is that it? Let's go. If we can. Hang on. That's the other problem about approaching this stuff in a non-linear fashion. You're like, have I gone the wrong... Can I get up there? Sure that I can. Wait, all right, hang on. God oh my, that was lucky. I love that. Come on. Right. Ah. Oh. I get on top of that? Oh, no, I guess not. Right, same again. That's the thing with this level. You do a lot of this. A lot of backtracking. No backtracking, because I ain't slacking. <laughs> so listen to the lines I'm stacking. Shouts if you know what that's from. Bob it in the comments. If you honestly know what that's from, then you're an absolute nah, he's done. My boy David Kirkland knows what that's from, but I mean, that by, that's by the by. He's a Mr. Nice music. Right, come on. On the topic of uh, uh, my good friend, Mr. David Kirkland, 
He runs this retro gaming event. If you live up north and watch these videos, uh, it's called Ryton, uh, Ryton Retro, like R-Y-T-O-N. And it's like uh, Sunderland, kind of Northumberland, kind of way that way. If you're up north, um, I know he's doing one for Halloween and he's going to have like a... Uh, some splatterhouse machines and all kinds of stuff. It's like a big, it's a big deal. Like he has loads of cool coin ups there and stuff like that. Um, give him a uh, give right and retro a look on it on the Facebook page because um, yeah, he's a really cool guy. Uh, I met him through through MMA originally, uh, but we both had like a big passion for uh, for old school gaming and stuff. And it's really cool to see that he's done something awesome with it with that passion. Um, right, where are we now? Is this it? I think it is. Right, now, it's at points like this where patterns become very important. So what's going to happen now is we'll move that way because that's going to come and then we're going to duck. And we're going to duck because this big laser thing is going to come across. It's going to fire a couple of shots. If we stay ducked, we're all right. And jump. There you go, you see? Look at the old tails. So that's all we... Now, here's the thing, right? You can jump in there and you can get greedy. And that's where you end up dying. Same again. I didn't do on that time. So there's two patterns basically. There's one with the, uh, the ground one and one without. Jump. It's weird like, and it's, it's such a strange comparison, but like, if you play any of the Souls games, or games of that nature, like, this is probably where the bedrock of your patience on uh, on bosses comes from. Because yeah, I could risk and try and get another out of there, but I'll probably lose all my rings, or I might fall under the oil. Do you know what I mean? Like, that patience, that, and it's the later bosses especially, the last boss is just an absolute, like, Yeah, the last boss is an absolute kind of a textbook lecture in kind of patience, video game impatience. Do you know what I mean? Not getting, not worrying about getting that extra hit because you'll do this until the end of time. Do you know what I mean? You'll get him eventually. And that's the problem. But in a funny kind of way, I think that's what a lot of gaming is kind of missing now. Um, oh, there you go. You see? Spot on. But... That only worked because of Tails. But, um, yeah, I think when I look at a lot of gaming now, what I feel is like that... Because we don't live in a... We, if you're being honest, I mean, we don't live in a patient society. Like, you don't really want to wait for anything, right? Like, you can have anything straight away. Like, if I'm if I want to watch a video or something... I am... Um, oh, tune. Now, this, if I remember rightly, has got three... Uh, it's got three zones to it. Um, but yeah, we don't live in a patient society, right? So, we're, we're, we're like used to not waiting for stuff. Like, I want stuff yesterday. Like, that's that's the, the feeling. And like, uh, the crazy thing is, when you look into kind of games and stuff, like, it's mad to think how long we used to wait for stuff. Um, specifically, like, imports and stuff with different territories. Like, you get, you get into like, 8, 16-bit gaming. It's mad, like, the time gaps between games coming out in different territories. Like, for example, uh, you look at the NES uh, and, the, and the SNES, like, the PAL versions. Some of the weights that we had were, were just unbelievable. Like, Castlevania 3 on the NES came out around about the same time uh, as Castlevania 4 on the SNES in the UK. Do you know what I mean? You ain't that far apart. And you think it's a brand new system. Do you know what I mean? With twice as much power, uh, it's craziness. Absolute craziness. Right, come on. Oh. But yeah, that isn't the... Uh, that's just not society we live in now. Right, where is he? Come here. Now, this bit's easier to do with it. With Tails. Can you see? Because we get twice the... And that's the, the danger that you've got, you see. Um... As long as you're both on, it's fine. But if just one of you's on, the thing only goes up half the speed. And then those kind of exploding starfish type things, you can get absolutely wrecked by. Come on. And again. Yep. Right, where are we going? Are we going up? Yes. 
see. I'm dangerously close now. By the way. Oh, these fucking things. Come on. There we go. Solid. I'm happy with that. To get an extra life, this late stage of the game is really good. Because as you've, as you've probably seen, the difficulty really, really ramps up. Shit. No, it's alright. It's not the bit where you die. You see how slow I went up that then because I didn't have tails with me. Where are we going? Oh, huh. not bad. Should get no bad school for that either as well, to be honest with you. Right, through at one. And another continue that we don't need. That's so nice, isn't it? That that little uh, bit of scratching. Oh, come on. This level's pretty nice. I know the whole game is, but this this level, like an industrial looking zone, with like a with like lava everywhere and spikes and, and kind of a, a steampunky looking uh, background is so so nice. It's cool though, right? Very cool. Right, come on. I mean, that was solid. I'm not gonna say for a second. That's the other thing as well with Sonic. Like, you you you'd have bits of like complete brilliance where it's obvious you don't mean it do you know what i mean but the the gaming engine itself just runs that quickly and you have bits where it's just so fast and so kind of completely fluid that you can pull off these kind of uh, moments of kind of 100 miles an hour do you know what i mean like this jump just sticks and that jump just sticks and that's the kind of it uh, oh, i can lead anywhere uh, and that's kind of the joy of it what am I doing? Is there a... Oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't know what I was doing for a second then. It's really weird with doing this. That's why you play stuff enough, like, you just kind of hear... Uh, your instinct takes over with stuff like this. Ah, I get that. Um... Right, let's go. Hang on, get on. Yeah, I 100% need two people for this, for this operation. You can get, you can obviously get killed by that steam on the side, which is a, a big concern. Come on. <laughs> Once again, hokey music. A strange section to get one of these on, to be honest with you, but here's what it is. I'm not going to turn down invincibility for however long. Ah, oh, there you go. Save me now, innit? Come on. Oh, fuck off. Right. Up. Oh. Yep. Right, up again. Hey, here we go. Oh yeah, this bit. That's dead Sonic, isn't it? That. Anything where you go upside down is, is as Sonic as it gets. Come on, Tails. Pull your weights on. Did well there as well. <gasps> Fine, never worried. Is that the end? No, it's not far though. Oh, that's. Come on. Nice, I'm happy with that. The funny thing in Sonic is like, there's very few moments like that. Um, the the second to last level, uh, the uh, the fortress bit in the sky. Oh, off screen, come on. Yeah, the second to last bit, the fortress in the sky bit, there's a few like, if you don't at this jump, you'll die kind of moments. Um, but overall, as a franchise, like, certainly at this point in the game, there wasn't that many kind of bits where a missed jump met kind of certain death. Um, 
you just go back to a bit you were on earlier, do you know what I mean? Um, oh. Right. Ah. It's alright, it's alright. That bit. I can't be far from the end of this level as well. You notice it now as well, like I probably am. Like these levels are getting uh, these levels are getting longer. Um There you go. The other thing that's kind of unique about this franchise is you start getting your head around the physics of Sonic soon after you kind of play it. And that's such such an overlooked part of it for me, is the fact that like uh, you just you know how he runs and you know how he jumps now. But imagine like if you've never played this before, like it's so completely unique the way that you jump off things and the way your character reacts with other kind of uh, with other uh, kind of characters and spheres and stuff. And like you, it's on like after the first two games. Really? Fuck it. At least we both died. After the first after the first two games, there was something that was so unmistakably Sonic about the way this character moved and played, and I think that's such a big part of why the whole thing was kind of successful. I mean I'm beyond exasperated at that point, that geezer got me twice. Right, let's try not to get squashed this time, eh? There you go. No! Oh, fucking you, I'm getting by that. Come on, Tails. Let's get gone. You see, like, if I didn't have both of us there, we'd both end up getting it there. Um, am I up here? Yes, yeah, up here, right? There you go. Up and around. Oh, so Sega that. Oh, for f Hang on, does this lead me to the promised land? <laughs> Far from it. I think. Is this one of the bits where you can die? I'm not sure. No, there's a floor here. 100% there's a floor here. Well, I hope there is. Oh, shit. No, yeah, there is. Come on, don't die. I mean, what kind of bullshit was that? Come on. Dad. How am I supposed to... Hmm. I need a ring here, don't I? There we go. Some there. Right, come on. Uh, can I do... There you go. Surely that'll work, right? I'll take that. I mean, clearly not what, uh, what the right idea was, but we're there. Sod it. Ugh. That was added, that dash attack was added this game, and it helped out so much because there are so many bits like that where you need to run up at stuff, uh, but there isn't the facility or capacity to kind of do that. Don't die, eh, Tails? Jesus Christ, standing underneath that friggin' heavy machinery. Shoutouts if you watch NXT. I'm all about heavy machinery. This you can die if you fuck this up. So I better not do, eh? Now this... Is this the bit with... I mean, I've played this game so many times, but it's still kind of fresh and surprising in terms of I'm constantly going, is this, yeah. But then it's later levels, right? It's always the same with any game. I can tell you everything in the uh, Green Hill Stroke Emerald Hill chemical plant, do you know what I mean? Those first couple levels. Aquatic Ruin. Music on Aquatic Ruin. Music on Aquatic Ruin might be one of my... If I had to pick, like, three songs from this, I mean... I'd probably go Chemical Plant, 
Aquatic Ruin and maybe Casino. I don't know, but I really like Mystic Cave as well. Where's Tails? Come on. That's it. Get with the program, son. Obviously a pun on... Uh, his name's Miles Per Hour. Obviously a pun on uh, Miles Per Hour. Um, as I think I mentioned in the intro. Come on. This bit. Yeah, you can die. I love how Tails like, can you die here? You go first. Oh, straight back on. He's fine. Right. Oh, friggin' hate this boss. Right. It's worth getting it early. Oh, shit. No, that's frigged it. Right, if you... <laughs> that's I did this, such a bad explanation of that strategy. What you're supposed to do is crack him once you get those rings go everywhere and you can get two or three hits in which makes the whole process a lot easier. Um, but yeah, it's a tricky boss this is. It's one of those ones that like I should probably look up a strat for but I don't know, what's the point, right? Can I get... That's the one. So you can time it right so Tails gets the hit. So Tails gets the hit but you've got to position him in the corner, right? Ugh, not like that. Come on. No. Go on. Tits. Well, he ain't killing me. No. Might as well go in now. <laughs> Already that's better, right? Come on, Tails. See, if I had a two player. A second person playing. This would be the easiest boss in the entire world. As I would just run off like an absolute coward. And let Tails go get involved. Nice. See already he's only got... What's he got left there? Four, has he? There you go. Three now. Dun, 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 dun. Sound, the boss music's good on this. Here he is. Duck. Yeah, he's nearly done here. But still. Still easy to mess up. I still feel like I'll probably have a crack at this. Jesus. That is done now. Come on. One more. There you go. Now get him before he shoots that laser thing. There you go. Kind of ambush him a bit. Solid. Lost a life there, did we? Yeah, what are we down to? Seven? Yeah, still doable. Now that's like the longest, uh, the longest level that you'll do. And now basically what you've got is just a set of small levels. Getting towards the end of the game now. This music's good, to be honest. And what I need to do, what I have done, if I can get through this without dying, uh, is you really need to try and stockpile uh, lives. Because... Oh, 150 touch! Um, because I'll level with you. You're going to die on the next bit. If you get past this first bit, uh, you're going to die on the next bit uh, quite a few times, the fortress bit. Uh, just because it's just so hard. And that's the bit. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do a couple of shortcuts as well. Um, and even with them, it's dead hard. There's a very... If I do it without dying, then I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest with you. I feel like I should have some kind of internal competition stroke wager with myself. Uh, but no, that's just jinx now. I'll end up dying on that run then. So nice this music is, isn't it? Come on. Oh, what? Shit. I really didn't need that, did I? Dickhead. That's what you end up on. That big plane. So, so, so nice. Come on. Oh, no, you can't die from that, can you? I know you can't on the actual thing, but... Well, I don't want to try it out, to be honest with you. Jesus Christ. Keep moving. There you go, we're alright. Sort of. 
that's what happens is you land and then those things get you see like if you hit it if you're in mid-air and you hit the propellers you're fine but if you land you time it wrong uh, you land and then you just walk into them I think we're nearly here is it yeah right let's do it Jesus Christ wing fortress right so if I walk forward for oh come on really oh <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, that bets off. Um, so yeah, I guess you've got forward movement sooner than I thought I had. So it's from when the plane gets it, is it? God, you learn something new every day. Right. Uh, yeah, so this. Hard, very hard. Um, what I'm going to try and do is, well, cut a load of bits out of it, to be honest with you. Come on, chicken. Right, now, what I need to do is, there's a point where you got to try and just get the peak of the jump. Come on. There we are, right now, get that. And then, you see, I can get up there. <sighs> you accept that, because I'll get a couple of them when I go over. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Get the chicken again. And we've cut like a big part of it out, a very hard part of it out as well. What I need to do now is yeah, land here. And I need to run and then go through. So go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Oh, don't. <sighs> yeah, I deserve to die. It's fanning around. What I need to do is get hit and then walk through that blade and go on the bit afterwards. My bad. Right, let's do this again. You see why I said we needed a lot of lives now, right? What you normally do if you do the bottom bit here to get the chicken. What you normally do, yeah, if you do the bottom bit is you have to jump from platform to platform. Yeah, that's fine. I have a problem with that. Take the chickens. I love how, like, there's two animals in there. An eagle, who presumably is fine. And then a monkey, who you'd presume just tumbles to his death. Huh. Well rescued, Sonic. Eagle, fine, yeah. Monkey, not so much. Right, so. Let's get across. Right. Walk into this, and then walk forward. Get a ring. There we go, right. That's cut quite a bit out, you see. What I need to do now is just time this right. See that little gun platform there? I need to land on that. I need to time it right. I wait till it goes in. Right, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's all right, it's all right, we're fine. Come on. Oh, solid. And then, oh, for well, at least I hit the thing anyway. See why I need lives now. You've got to hit that and then just leave it. So hit that truck thing, and then just leave it. There you go, you see? And jump the other one, or you'll just go backwards and forwards. Jesus Christ. Right, uh, See, th this feels a bit more safe and sonic-y, because there's stuff on the ground. But yeah, the rest of it, not so much. Come on. Right, uh, Oh, yeah. Where are we going there? Yeah, through the wall, obviously. Uh, not through that wall. Up and across. Boss time. Here he is, Dr. Robotnik. So what he does now is he shoots these spike platforms at you. And what you've got to do is you can't touch the bottom of them, obviously, but you can touch the top. And what you, what you need to do is step on him to try and get this lazy seat. Nice, got two hits in there. Can I get a third yet? Yeah, run. Laser will take about seven or eight hits, I think. Come on. Yeah, got one. And then go. Stressful. This. For a Sonic boss. Very stressful. Come on, there's one. I oh, see. As long as I've got a ring, we're alright. Can wait this side for a bit. That's it. Come on, get that. Come on. Yeah, we're fine, fine. He ain't going to take much more here, you see. Just need a platform to line up right. Like that. There you go. Where's Robotnik now? Flap tip. Come on. Where is he? Oh, he's pissed off in his spaceship, has he? Well, that's that then. Or is it? I mean... Highly improbable. 
You're doing well to keep up with that. I mean, we're going very high in the atmosphere here. There's nothing holding me on that. Oh, great. Burnt my legs off. Amazing. I love how he's holding on there. This is so 90s, though. Watch this now. Oh, I mean, that is cool, though, isn't it? I do like that effect. But, yeah, you'd be dead now. Well, you'd have been dead ages ago. Let's be honest. But, uh, oh, I mean, what are you playing these games for? I'm a hedgehog with blue shoes. With red shoes. Blue shoes. Red shoes. A blue hedgehog with red shoes, what I meant. Right, now. Sneaky little tip for this guy, this Robo Sonic. If you wait here. One, two, three. Get gone. You can get a nice three hits in there. And I think he only takes, like, eight to kill or nine. Gone. You can't hit the top of his head, right? In terms of, like, over the... So if you think of his face as a clock, right? Um... If he's looking at me now, right, I've got to hit him there at 10 o'clock. I can't hit him at, like, 2 o'clock. Obviously reverse from when I'm facing this way. But, yeah, I've got to get him on the front kind of quarter of his head. It's like a back of the head shot in MMA, do you know what I mean? Get him on the forehead. So he's done. And now, right, final boss. This bit I never get. Faster than the speed of light, outrun by a fat man with thin legs. Right, here, here we go. Ugh, a colossal... A colossal exercise in patience because there is so few frames where you can safely hit him there's one now this is the tactic we wait for this to get a lock on sprint off that lands and then we're gonna wait this side and he'll do a fire the arms we'll move in and he'll go again we'll do the same again go and now when we go to him, hopefully, he's just gonna he's gonna do it. And then he'll step back. I and mean, when he steps back, we need to get one in. You can get two hits in, but I mean There you go, you see. The risk is that you just hit his claws. If you hit his claws, you're dead. So that is basically what we need to do. That's the that's the the pattern. The safe strat, so to speak. You can run there and get another shot on at him. I mean, if you watch speedrunners do this. Like, they can do it in, like, two cycles. But it's such a risk. It's such a huge risk. Right. Come on. There we go. Beautiful. I don't know how many hits he takes. Like, ten or something. Go. It's a, it's a, a longish process, to be honest with you. But it's, like I say, it is an exercise in patience. Is what it is. Because when you get near the end, you can you when you've got a lot of hits in, you're like, man, if I get one more hit, the game's over. But then if you get if you go for that one more hit and you're at the claws, the game is over because you're dead. And if you die here, you have to do the robot Sonic again, which is a bit of a nightmare. Go. That's the best way of doing that. Like I say, you can sprint flat up to him now and just get a jump and attack in. Same. Let's go. So hard to do this. It's like one of the harder bosses in a Sonic game, I think. Because, like, the more, like, in the modern era you play it, the harder it gets. Like, you expected a boss like this then. Do you know what I mean? You expected a proper, like... You needed a pattern that you had to figure out. A set of kind of a... Uh, yeah, do you know what I mean? A, a set of kind of a... Conditions that you had to meet. Like... The funny thing with stuff now is like... If you looked at this now... And you instructed somebody on how to do this... It's one of those things that you can't get good at without doing it. Like, you could watch... I've watched so many like, over the years... I know especially over the years I've been doing this, I've watched so many long play videos where people have said, oh, the strat is this, 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 and this, and all you need to do is X, Y, Z, and uh, uh. And then what happens is, like, you've still got to do it yourself, right? So you can watch this video of me doing it and understand the principles and the mechanics of it, but you've still got to do it. Ghouls and Ghosts is probably the best example for that. That's probably why I've, pl I've played that game to such a frenetic level. One more. Yeah. It's because I watch, like, speedruns, and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 I bet I could do that. But, like, you have to put the time in. 
and that's the thing with this like you can watch me doing this but you need to experience it and you need to kind of get your get your kind of timing down come on jesus he ain't got he ain't got much longer left here it's that thing of like you can and also as well it's the fact if you got any rings this would be dead easy um but i can see why they didn't give you any And this is the problem. This is already. Or this already feels like a long boss fight, right? So you're like in your head. You're like, uh, if I could get two hits in, like, cause if I ran at him full pelt then and did a jumping attack, I'd get him. But sometimes, if he's like half off the screen, you go straight in the claws and you're dead. Come on. Any second. Go back. Ugh, every one I'm like, oh, is it? I'm just expecting it to be the right one, and it really isn't. Come on. Come on. Music's cool on this, to be honest. Get ready. Gonna go back any second. Can't have much longer left. Still got a bit much more, obviously. Come on. Arms. So easy to die there. Come on. I think maybe he's got one or two more. Sit down! Right, let's get gone, shall we? Come on. Good job, Sonic. You've killed everyone. <laughs> yeah, you better get back in that plane, Tails. There we go. Come on. Come on. Effort. Nice. How amazing is that, right? Oh, I feel good for that. Don't you? How would you not? What an absolutely glorious playthrough that was. Um, God, it's, it's, it's been 76 episodes and we've done a first Sonic game. It feels mad to say that. But I'm really happy that we've done it. Uh, this, for me, probably one of the top... I don't know. It's easy top five Mega Drive games for me. Maybe top, I don't know. Top three, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Shining Force has got to be up there for me personally. But this, like, this little musical medley at the end is so sick. But this in general, Sonic 2, um, I just, I remember hype. Like, it's one of those things that made me think, like, God, this, this, like, video gaming was something that. Oh, nice. That's the two player music from uh, Mystic Cave. Nice. Um, yeah, it made me think it was one of those things that, like, I remember just this coming out. And I remember just thinking, like, I'm going to be involved with video games for a very long period of time. Like, as, as, as a little foresight you've got at that age. But I don't know. It's just that the kind of the build up behind it and stuff. And when I finally got uh, to play and stuff, I just understood in a, in a heartbeat exactly what all the, what all the fuss was about. Uh, and, and it makes kind of perfect sense, like... If you've got this, uh, then you love it, right? 
Differences ending wise, if you get all the Chaos Emeralds, is that you get like Super Sonic. So if you get over a certain amount of uh, rings, when you jump, uh, Sonic turns yellow and he can kind of sort of fly really. Um, but he, he runs super fast, but like you, you basically like it's it's a, it's a crazy kind of. You still die by falling, but like uh, you, you're kind of uh, this kind of yellow kind of Super Sonic. And if you finish the game with that, he kind of flies out the thing himself. Um, but yeah, I mean this is everything this channel is kind of about really like uh, games like this are why I still play games do you know what I mean 38 years into my uh, time on this rock and why I probably will until I, I don't know until my hands go completely from arthritis um, or uh, I don't know I get it by a bus or something because I mean yeah here we go big finish Salad. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm always going to want to play games like this, and I always just, I always imagine myself playing stuff like this. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that is, uh, or that was Sonic 2. Treat yourself. If you haven't played it already, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? It's been out 26 years. Um, yeah, so you need to sort yourself out. Um, but yeah, it's uh, incredible. It's one of those things that I do remember. It's very rare that you talk about games and remembering specific days. Like, I remember Sonic Tuesday. Do you know what I mean? I remember it kind of coming out. I didn't even have a Mega Drive, and I just remembered the hype kind of behind it. I remember seeing it in all the shops, and I just knew that, like, uh, this was a game that I was probably going to have to play at some point. I didn't know how, because I didn't have a Mega Drive or a job, or well, I was 12. Uh, I didn't have a Mega Drive or a job or any kind of thingy to get any money, and I, I think I just had an Amiga, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, just miles off my radar, but I still knew that I needed to play it. Um... But yeah, that's it. That's one credit classics for this week. Thank you very much to all, uh, all everyone. Thanks so much to everyone uh, for pledging on Patreon. I've had a few uh, new patrons this week, so thanks very much for that. Um, you'll see your name in the credits if you've uh, started contributing this week, which is awesome. Um, quick shout out as well. Um, the last couple of weeks, obviously, as you know, um, I, I'm uh, in between jobs at the minute. Um, I'm still kind of judging fights, obviously, as I do, but uh, I'm in between kind of day jobs. Um, and literally, I can't tell you how much these last couple of weeks uh, I've been listening to these two podcasts, and they're not kind of video game based, but like uh, you're all kind of cool people. So I thought I'd shoot these two uh, these two podcasts out there. Uh, they're made by the same people, um, and uh, the first one's called Crime and Sports, and the second one's called Small Town Murder. Now Crime and Sports is out every Tuesday, and Small Town Murder is out every Thursday. And it's by these two. Uh, American comedians called uh, James Petrogallo and uh, Jimmy Westman and it's just incredible like crime and sports is as it says like they kind of take uh, the story of a, a famous athlete who got involved with crime and the chronicle kind of his life and they're, they're comedians so it's just really funny and small town murder profiles like a murder that happens in a, a different American town every week um, I honestly can't tell you like how good that stuff is and lit for, for, for like progress running I, I honestly think I'm at my most productive progress running wise with games because what i can do is stick one of those podcasts on and just get better at kind of a, a game through that so uh, if you're on a uh, twitter or, or or facebook or anything like that and um, check out uh, crime and sports and check out small town murder as well i'll put links in the description box you really do need to get involved with that they've got a patreon as well um and they're, they're a really funny bunch of guys so yeah uh, get checking that out in terms of us we'll have another video out on saturday it'll be another patreon picks video thanks to everybody who's checked out the first one if you haven't you've got two choices you can wait four weeks until i just launch it on the channel or you can get involved with patreon for the meager sum of anything from uh, well you can give a dollar a month if you want but uh, anything from uh, if you want to get free stuff then anything from uh, two dollars a month um, you can have kind of I'll send you stuff in the post you can pick me games to play and all kinds of good stuff like that shout outs to my boy uh, Hayden Hughes known him for a very long time very exceptionally good human being who signed up on Patreon this week and is enjoying the uh, the bountiful uh, the bountiful uh, gifts that I, uh, I sent him in the post um, and uh, the access to the extra content which is always cool uh, don't forget also that Patreon link's in the description box. We've got our Amazon affiliate scheme as well. If you shop on Amazon, click on that link in the description box and then just do your shopping as normal. It won't cost you anything extra, but we get a bit of a kind of referral fee, which is quite cool. And it helps me buy kind of stuff like control pads and, and uh, 
headphones for recording and bits and pieces of stuff so it, and uh, i bought a boom shield with it a while ago so the sound quality is a bit different i'm trying a few things out filtering wise with sound filtering software and i honestly think like listening to the cup first couple of episodes i've done like i think this is like sounding like the best the best season i've done so far i'm really happy with the differences with the stuff that i've bought that's made a difference with sound quality so um and i've also kind of elevated the mic a bit so you can't hear the uh, you can't hear as much background stuff and done a few bits and pieces that i read about so i'm really pleased with how that's turned out um i hope you good people have a great wednesday um and i hope that you'll join me on saturday for patreon picks but if not i'll see you next wednesday for another episode of one credit classics Take care.